This is King Island Community Radio, 100.5 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, we had summer, or summer is almost over and done, and it sounds, looks like, that politics in Tasmania was a little bit quiet over the last few months, but that could be, of course, in the background. You never know for sure. Now, the best way to get an update and have a chat is, of course, with our member for Mergence and for the Legislative Council, uh, Ruth Forrest. Ruth, welcome. Hello, Wayne. It's lovely to be chatting to you again. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, now uh, I got you on the picture here. Do, do you do you look very rested after a little bit of a break from it all? Or oh, um, yeah, well, I have been working fairly hard the last couple of you know, three four weeks, I guess, on committees um, during the the period where Parliament's not sitting. Committees still continue to work, and when they, you know, we we knew that things were a little bit uncertain with the government and their intentions. Um, my intention was to try and get as much committee work done and reporting done out of the way before the inevitable happened yesterday um, when the ele uh, election was called, actually called, which means that all the committee work stops dead in its tracks um, and anything, uh, the work that's been done can be taken forward into the next parliament at the will of the houses. Like we both have, the house have still agreed to re-establish the committees. Um, so it's quite a process, really. So we, we know now that there'll be a delay until, I would suggest, until at least the middle of May um, or, you know, around that time before the committees are even re-established. So there's a long void there of scrutiny um, and work that goes on in the background that a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of. Oh, is it because you you've done a lot of work for the island uh, over the last couple of years and we just go into a flashback uh, we're talking about uh, extension of grassy port there, there, there's mm -hmm. m the mine is going to support with that with with, with overburden uh, we have the ambulance servers that still uh, have to find a toilet and a place where to go uh, there's yeah. so many things that you worked on the shipping inquiries does this mean now that everything is on hold and 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 sort of stops? And point two, then, if say the government changes from liberal to labour, does it mean that we have to, and in your case, you have to start all over again? I would hope we don't have to start from scratch, way because I mean I'll still be there, <laughs> and I think in both houses, uh, both the liberal and labour members in both the houses are well aware of my um, raising of issues related to King Island frequently and persistently, acknowledging that we haven't made a lot of progress in some of them, which is very frustrating for, for me and I'm sure more frustrating for King Islanders. Um, and so now is an opportunity, I guess, to um, I would encourage members of um, residents of King Island to um, speak with a united voice um, because one would imagine there'll be a cast of one would expect quite a few candidates and um, hopefuls visiting the island. Um, if they don't, they're being entirely disrespectful to the people of the island. Uh, and it may be while we're at the show, we see a huge proliferation of um, you know, hopefuls and current members and that sort of thing visiting. But we need the island, and you know, I will certainly back up these, these messages left loudly and strongly, um, we need to keep at the forefront of all the candidates' minds, both parties, independence, everyone, the key things that impact the island. We know, as you've outlined, why the, the, the shipping, um, right down to things like why are we not using that hydro building for a more useful purpose, things like that that require a government decision. Um, so whilst decisions won't be made during this period of the election, but I think we need to make it really clear that what things, what decisions do need to be made after the, the election. So it, we need to speak with the United Voice as much as we can on these matters. I think that's always important, yeah, to be as a united front to uh, to stand up for, for, for what we are and don't just accept for, for, for what is said to us. Because aren't we dealing in many ways, and, and this is... Over the last 12 months in particular, we had so many promises. We have a premier that visits the island with his cabinet and, and says, yeah, I'll put it on the table. We have to look at it. Now, I don't know about their eyesight. They keep looking, but where's the action? Well, that's a very good question, Wade. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll just go back to the hydro building and the need for the ambulance volunteers um, and hopefully – a community paramedic for the island, but that's been promised, you know, talked about, 
uh, clearly on the table, but we don't seem to have seen that progressed as such. In any event, the volunteers who do a remarkable job on the island, because every person they attend, whether it be a car crash, whether it be a heart attack, whether it be you know, a pregnant mum with a complication of a pregnancy, whatever it is, they will almost certainly know that person. So it's always a challenge. It's always confronting. It's never easy work. So to not provide a, um, a fit-for-purpose facility for, those, for our volunteers to work out of is extraordinary. Um, it's also not acceptable. And to think we've got a building in the centre of town that would be very suitable for such purpose, um, but we still can't seem to even have a, a, an adult conversation about, well, it's not being used by hydro. What, why are we hanging on to it, a hydro, um, and, and, and make decisions like that? So... Uh, Hopefully, we'll see um, real attention paid to these things and some actual decisions made. It's just, it, it is frustrating, Wade. Well, brutally honest, Ruth, I only see one real good solution. <laughs> step, step up and become a new Premier of Tasmania. You know you're always welcome on King Island, and I'm sure you help us. You do something for us more than just a promise. Or maybe yeah. I'm, I'm hoping too much now, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the problem, I guess, is, um, I mean, I, I made a decision about where I sit. Um, you know, I sit in the upper house of the state parliament as an independent. So I'm not in the driving seat of actually um, decision making. But I think people will be making commitments during the election period. Some of them will be large commitments um, that, are, that impact mainland Tasmania perhaps more than King Islanders. Some will have a flow on effect for everybody. But it's really important that every local community has their voice heard. Um, I know that um, Mayor Blackie will be on the front foot with this, letting all candidates know what, from his point of view, as the, as the Mayor of King Island, what things matters to, matter to King Islanders. You know, we, we know too, there's, there's things that have been a problem for a very long time and continue to be, uh, but there's also the problems that are relatively new, like, like the you know, farmers who are facing drought conditions on the island and the necessity from an animal welfare perspective particularly to either get food onto the island for their animals, our fodder and other feed, or to get the animals, you know, the cattle off the island um, to feed lots and, um, and, to, and to support their, their health and welfare. Uh, there is a role for government in that. Um, and I the, I understand that the Liberal government have made some commitments around support for that. I'm not sure where that's actually got to, but um, we don't know how long this is going to last and we mm. don't know how, um, you know, whether we're going to have a wet autumn. Maybe we don't. But, I mean, the northwest coast got quite a lot of rain that King Island missed out on, which is unusual, but, it, you know, climate change is affecting different parts of our state in different ways. So we need to ensure that those those immediate problems are addressed with some degree of immediacy and urgency. The other ones, um, are, but then are not ignored because I oh, will get to that later. So I really, I will be, you know, encouraging um, all the candidates from Braddon to be well aware of the needs of King Island and to make some really serious and concrete commitments to King Island um, to ensure that the key things are dealt with and responded to. And then... When we get commitments made, we can hold them to account. Yeah, but the problem is always, Ruth, what I find, and maybe I sound now like uh, the grumpy constituent, but it's a bit like we're going to hear for sure for the next 28, 29 days that it's all about transparency, we have to listen, we do understand your issues and problems, we're going to fight for you. And then once we sit in that seat ready and all elected, what is going to change? What is going to happen? And this is not my words, but this is what I hear from a lot of people here in, in on King Island, part of part of Bread and Seed. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear that. And I any significant announcements that require funding, which is pretty much all announcements to a degree, uh, they do need to be submitted to the um to the Treasury through the their budget office. Um, and they have to be costed. And so what we should see. Um, probably close to the election day because it takes, you know, the parties have to form these up, they have to submit them to Treasury for costings and assessments. 
But um, I mean, if you put in a submission that says, well, this party, person, whoever, is going to commit to uh, you know, providing a million dollars for um, to support the building of, of some important infrastructure on the island, okay? Um, so do we just say that, okay, we agree that say that's a million dollars, right? They said it's a million dollars, it'll be a million dollars, or do we actually ask them to provide the breakup of the cost of that. So how do we know it's going to be a million dollars? Is it going? Is it a building that's likely to blow out in cost? That sort of thing. Um, so budget. The costings are not always easy to um, say. Well, is that actually what you're committed to? But unless we get some sort of commitment that is being costed, um, then it, it's it is as you rightly say, Wade. It's just words. It's just words. Um, so we do need um, some written promises. Um, written commitments to the island to address the very real needs that we know are there, um, including looking at the future of shipping, which um, hasn't actually been, haven't, you know, haven't really gone back out to market in the, last, in the last few years to really test to see what is there in terms of, you know, a reliable um, uh, economic, I guess, and competitive service. Now, okay, we have the uh, the elections uh, coming. Uh, well, it was as you said, uh, there was uncertainty, and yeah, what was going to happen? Um, do you think that, that that well, put it this way, it was very difficult to keep governing for uh, for Jeremy Rockcliffe, but should he have stuck to to what he was doing? And if things go wrong, go wrong, because now it's almost like we call another election and then straight away say we want to reform, we want to get better, and therefore service Tasmania. How did that come across to you? Yeah, I mean, the, the premiers claim that they need stability and certainty. I mean, governments do like stability and certainty. I mean, Tasmania's do to a certain degree as well um, because you want some cer certainty that commitments made and promises made and, um, you know, th things that are on track will continue. The interesting thing for me in watching all of this way was the, there was an agreement in place between the two former Liberal members who became independent to guarantee supply and confidence what the government, what the premier was asking them to do, from my understanding of the agreements and my reading of some of the, the cor correspondence that's been publicly released, is that the premier was asked it was requiring them to not support any amendments to legislation or motions that the opposition, like the Labor Party, the Greens, um, or independent members in the chamber might put forward. Um, that's an extraordinary um, request to make, that you're basically removing any power of an independent member to vote according to their conscience when any Liberal Party member, can, backbencher, can cross the floor and vote contrary to the government. It doesn't do their career any good, as I understand it, but they still can do it. They don't, they just, there's a prompt they let the leader know it. Okay, so the premier is expecting them to take away that opportunity, which is quite an extraordinary request. That this the previous agreement was that they would they would guarantee supply and confidence. So notionally, the premier premier could have gone back to parliament in March, the first week of March, as scheduled, um, with that guarantee in place. Um, it might have been messy, it might have been untidy. He might have lost some. Um, amendments to legislation. He might have found some legislation was voted down, but that's the swings and roundabouts of governing. If you bring forward good good legislation that's supported broadly, it will get through, and the majority of legislation does get through, and that's the point. Um, but to say that you, you have to support everything that comes to this House um, is, is an extraordinary request that is really... Um, it was it was a bridge too far, I think, and I don't know that anyone would really have supported that. So he 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 acted on the, the belief that they wouldn't have honoured that promise, and I don't. It wasn't tested um, by going back to the house, so we'll never really know. But I, I can guarantee it would have been messy. So can we say that this government has failed over the last two and a half years? They've struggled to. Um, to deliver the legislative agenda and some of their policy agenda work, um, mainly because um, there's been this 
constant opportunity for opposition and independent members um, to bring forward motions of a whole range of matters, including no confidence, um, that have taken up time. And I think that's, so the work has been slowed down, but then we haven't had a lot of work come through either. Mm. Do you do you think that uh, because, of course, you can understand as journalists, uh, we get bombarded by, by press releases and particularly uh, from the opposition over the last couple of weeks, which almost was an indicator that this must be leading to, uh, to an election. Now, yeah. okay, l l let's predict uh, that the Labour government might come in and uh, they, they take over government and uh, they're going to lead uh, the state. Um, do you think that in the short term that they would find the funding and the solutions to solve issues like the health issues, the waiting list in hospitals and the ambulance services, the housing crisis, do you think that, that they would be capable to solve that in, in no time? I'm not sure that anyone's capable of solving those really big problems, Wade. I think we need to take a very mature approach to discussing what our challenges actually are. And just um, the, today, um, released on the Treasury website, is the revised estimates report. And that gives us an update from um, how our budget situation is um, s sitting from the budget that was passed last year, um, the, the regular, budget, regular budget process. That's showing that every indicator is heading in the wrong direction pretty much. Okay, so to say that, you know, we've got a solution to fix all these problems and which they will do. Everyone will do that, I'm sure. We have. And the Premier yesterday came out in the press release after he had visited the Governor seeking the um, election um, that they have a strong plan. Saying, a strong, saying you have a strong plan tells me absolutely nothing. I want to know how he and his government or party and the Leader of the Opposition and her party are going to address the very real challenges that face us from a financial point of view. We've got enormous pressures in dealing with the Commission of Inquiry matters, which are very serious and do need attention, but we've also got all the other challenges that are already there, as you said, Wade, access to health services, um, the challenges there, our educational outcomes, um, infrastructure demands, we've got allegedly got to build a stadium down here in Hobart, you know, um, all those things. Um, and there's, and there's a, almost a blind um, ignoring of the very, the very real reality that's in that report. So I would like to hear from both leaders and the Greens and anyone else who um, is, is putting their hand up what they will do to actually deal with the financial challenges that are facing this state and deliver those services that we absolutely need. And don't promise $5 when you only got a dollar in the bank? <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if there, there are, um, it's not, not saying the state's broke. We can do, you know, we can and will do um, um, things, provide services, you know, meet commitments that are absolutely imperative. But you can't pretend that things are all, you know, tickety-boo in the Treasury um, when they're not. And we've got to actually look at how we're going to address those challenges. That's what I want to hear because we can't deal with all those other problems if we don't deal with that. Now, looking at it from your seat in the uh, Legislative Council there, and it may be a hard question, I don't know, uh, as the situa situation is right now, who do you think, uh, if you want to answer that question, who do you think would make a better government uh, today, tomorrow, the Labor Party or the Liberal Party? Uh, I, I, I'm not in a position to make that um, assessment on that, Wade. I think um, what I want, to, as I said, from both, from both parties, both major parties particularly, is how they will address these very real challenges. I'll make my decision once I hear what they think they are able to do. And if I just hear throwaway lines and slogans like strong plan or I'm not sure what the Labor Party slogan is yet, I haven't seen that yet, um, but unless there's some substance behind that, then it's going to be a very difficult decision for me. Now, you, you were talking earlier that you mentioned that uh, it would be a good idea for the uh, the candidates also to come to King Island, not just uh, tell them to, to vote and, and don't show up. Hey, show your face. The show is uh, is a great spot to do that uh, next month. Um, now, I know you're going to be here. You're, you're even going to be here for five days. 
Um, yeah. That's not going to be a holiday. No, I am coming for a weekend, mate, so I will take a little bit of time okay. um, over the weekend perhaps to enjoy our beautiful island over there. And also I'm bringing my mum with me because um, um, her brother, my uncle, lives on King Island and so it's, it'll be mum's first trip to King Island. So we're kind of looking forward to, you know, seeing mum on King Island as well. So, yeah, she'll be there. Mum's probably going mortified if she hears this. <laughs> And probably, well, more to fight or not, I'm sure that uh, you will find time also, and particularly do, during the show, I guess, uh, for people to uh, meet up with you, ask questions. Uh, if if they, if, do you do we start a way that people can already start asking questions? Shoot you an oh, email yes, or whatever at, beforehand, or no, people can get in touch with me by email. Um, they can also ring Eve while I'm off as though she is on leave this week. She'll be back next week. She's been having a lovely time with her family, which is fantastic. I do miss her terribly. She's a great um, support in my office. Um, but I will have appointments available, particularly Monday and, and Monday before the show and the Friday before that weekend. Um, I do have to come back on the afternoon of the show day. Uh, I've got commitments um, that rest of that week that I um, can't avoid. But I will be there from Friday morning, so I've already got a few appointments and that scheduled in with um, people, but we'll fit things in. Um, and if necessary, I'll, I can meet people on the weekend as well, but I would like to have a little bit of time with my mum mm. um, and my uncle and um, aunt on the island. What What do you like to hear from people? What 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 sort of questions? What What are What are your interests? I think, look, I'm really interested in things that will make a difference to the lives of King Islanders um, and often they do relate to access to services or uh, as facing all Tasmanians at the moment, um, it's not just King Island but it's ad mag Magnified on King Island is the cost of living pressures. Like we know that you know fuel, for example, is much more expensive on King Island. We know that groceries are more expensive. We know that pretty much everything is more expensive. Um, and how do they think um, we could deal with some of these challenges? A lot of these things are not new, I know, but every now and then people come up with some really good ideas and good suggestions. So I'm really up for people who want to raise a challenge, raise a, a situation or a challenge or a difficulty they're having. But particularly if they've got some way of trying to address it, um, uh, the health services on King Island are, are generally very good. Um, we're lucky to have the facilities we do have, but but it's the thing we don't tend to get there is the allied health services that we visit regularly and they, they, they're funded to come for on the day and go back, which is a really inefficient use of that resource. By the time you get to the airport in Wynyard, get on the plane, get over there, you've only got half a day before you go back. So having these services stay for two days, so fly in one morning, see patients all that day, um, and then the next morning and go back in the afternoon and perhaps come slightly less often, but you'll actually see more patients that way and more people. So these are the sort of things that I think are really helpful to hear from the community is what they think is going to work because it's people who live in that community and access those services and know how often they need to, need to access them often have um, the solutions. Ask me any question when you're there, folks, but don't ask me who to vote for. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, it's it, it will be a difficult decision. People have formed their own views. I think different things matter to different people. But I, I do hope that all candidates are very clear about what they stand for and what will they will commit to doing on on and on and for King Island because it's easy to come over there and say, yeah, 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 I hear you, I hear you, which is bit what you're saying, Wade, and then or we'll look into it. And then there seems to be looking into this void of nothingness because nothing comes back after it. Um, we need to try to keep holding people to account. So anything that people get from um yeah in terms of commitments, try and make sure they're in writing. Because when we've got those things in writing, I've got something to go back with and say, well, you promise this. Where is it? What are you doing about it? What is the progress on that? Let's hope that they keep their promises, uh, Ruth Forrest. We thank you very much for your time and we see you in a couple of weeks at the show. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to it. I hope the weather's fantastic as it normally is on King Island. <laughs>